All right, welcome back. So next we're gonna work on the body. All right, so we're all set. So the body is gonna be one big revolve. And the way that we're gonna do that is creating a sketch on the right plane. So I'm gonna start by making a horizontal line and another line down here. And I'm going to connect these lines. And this is going to be construction geometry. And from here, or sorry, from here to here is 130. And then we're going to have a neck piece that comes out the top. So we want a little bit of space between. Oh, that was weird. Uh, We want a little bit of space between the uh, the skull and the end. So we'll make that five. And we want a decent amount of space here. Let's make this 30. And this will be 30. And I'll make this 40. We want a flat bottom so he can like sit on his butt. And then we're gonna use a spline. And we're gonna connect the top to the bottom. And here I'm gonna make, I'm gonna click this line and then this line and make them tangent. This stomach's out too far, just a little bit. You could sort of play with it to get it how you want. But I feel like his belly should be more out here. And then come back. Something like that, maybe. And then what if we're going to offset all these lines by five? And then we close these ends off. And then, so right now it, it's wanting to go 360 degrees all the way around. We don't want that. We want only half of it in the front. So... What if we went mid-plane? Yeah, that's what we want. That looks pretty good. So you can play with this as much as you want. The thing is, like, it's a little weird, right? Because you want you want the front part to be round, but then it, it'll bring that to the sides as well. So you have to be a little careful. But, um, yeah, I like the profile we came up with here. All right, so next we're going to make the wings. So I'm going to make a sketch on this plane. And we could get pretty creative with the wings. The only thing that we need to watch out for is to not make them too large. Otherwise, the motor won't be able to drive them up and down. So what if it's like this? Boom. I don't want that to be at a right angle like that. Something like that is not bad. Maybe we slide it over a little bit. So here's another good tool. So if you select all of these and then you press move entities, you got to pick a point where to start, but I'll just slide all this over a little bit like that. It's not bad. Okay. So we're going to take a step away from actually so now we'll extrude the wings we don't want them to be too big and basically the longer that they get so the more that they extend out to the left the harder they're going to be able to lift 
uh, basically the reason is they'll have a, a larger lever arm and increased the amount of torque. But basically all we want to do is create nice looking wings, but don't make them too thick or too long outwards. And I think this looks pretty good. So now let's add some thickness to them. Uh, th we'll do three millimeters because that's the minimum, right? Um, and then I want to, it looks a little weird just like this. So why not, so why not add a little bit to them? So I'm going to hide the body right now and I'm going to press convert entities and I'm going to add a little bit of detail to them just by like extrude cutting a little bit in and having like offset thicknesses. So uh, we have the, the outer perimeter and then let's see. Uh, what if we go here by two millimeters and then bi-directional? This one is reference, trim this and this, and this and this, and then this one and this one and this one and this one and that one. How's that? And that one? And that one? All right, that looks pretty good. All right, so now we're gonna cut into this by only 0.5. You'll be able to see it when you actually print it out, but it won't affect the strength of the wing too much. And also we're saving some weight, right? We're trying to make like thin wings that look nice, but that the motor will be able to lift up. Also, the wing should have a little hole at the center. We'll, we'll define the hole later, but uh, that looks pretty good. So let's mirror this. To the other side so mirror select the right plane bodies the mirror boom nice that looks pretty good okay so next we're gonna take a step away from the wings and i'm gonna show you how to make a gear train so if we go over to our assembly file um first off a gear train is gonna uh drive these wings right so in the back the plan is to have our dragon, right? And then there's gonna be gear teeth on these, right? Gear teeth on these, ah, that's messy. <laughs> and then there's gonna be a motor right here. And this is also gonna have gear teeth that mesh with, with uh, the wings. So as this turns, uh, these are going to turn this way and these are going to turn this way. And then the opposite will happen if the motor goes the other way. So as it turn or whoops. Give me blue. As it turns this way, uh this will turn this way moving the wing up and then this one will turn this way and they'll move together. So that's the goal here. We basically have to create gear teeth that mesh on these circles. So I'll show you how to do that. So by default, I don't think you'll have this enabled, but if you go to design library, toolbox, and then you press add in now, basically there's a lot of math behind creating gears that like mesh properly and SolidWorks makes it really easy and like does all the work for you by creating a design library of different gears that you can access for your designs. So once you press toolbox, if you go to uh, ANSI metric, and then you go to power transmission, gears, and then you go to spur gear, and you just drag it into your model, it'll give you a gear. And then now in this little dialog window, you can just like type in the specifics of what you want. And it'll output and like update the model of the gear for you that you can use. 
Okay, so if we open up our gear, you, you right click it and then you press edit toolbox components. You're gonna get a couple of options that like basically help us pick what type of gear it's gonna look like. So module is basically the size of the gear. It has uh, it like takes in proportion like the diameter of the gear time or divided by the number of teeth or something like that. Um, I've already picked gears that already work and I'll just show you how to change it to that setting. All right, so we're gonna go module and go to 1.5. And then number of teeth will make 20. So the trick is here, if you want gears to mesh, usually what I'll do is um, the benefit of using a gear, gear train is also that um, you can have increased torque or increased speed. Right now, we're not going to focus on that. Um, but if you wanted to make smaller or larger gears that mesh with the same style of gear, I usually just keep the module the same and then adjust the number of teeth. And that'll give you a gear train that either increases torque or increases speed. Um, so for now, we'll leave module at 1.5. Number of teeth is 20. And then face width, our wings are three. So we're going to make this three. And nominal shaft diameter, uh, we'll just bump this up so we can see the, the inner diameter. And that's it. So we'll check that, we'll save that. All right, so now let's move this like roughly into the position we want it. So basically these gear teeth are gonna go on this wing. So let's mate them, right? Press mate. And then we need these the axes to be aligned. So we need a concentric mate here and this cylindrical face. And then I'm going to pick this top face and this top face. And it's all works nose, but it's going to be coincident. Okay, so now we're going to copy this gear. And do the same thing for the other side. goes just like that okay now you can see that obviously this isn't going to work they're colliding with each other so let's edit our master and our wing has to slide over a bit so here what if we made a measurement like this and then now we just increase it so what about 13? And then maybe we put a constraint for how long this can get. We'll make this 135. All right, let's see how that looks. All right, we're getting a little bit closer, but they got to slide over even more. So uh, 14? No, let's try 15. Oh, uh, that might work. Okay. So now we need to like orient the gears in a way that they're going to mesh. So basically you need to like overlap the gear teeth. All right. That looks really good. So basically you want it to look like that. So now we like the position of our gears. We like the size that they are. So now I'm going to fix them in place. So basically, like if I were to actually open this file, it's like a SolidWorks pre-built file and it has like equations and expressions and variables that like based on that dialog menu where you're like changing module or whatever, it'll update and change this model. So we don't want to mess with this model. So basically, I'll I'll you I'll create the gears and get the size that I want and put them into the position that I want. But when it comes to like actually putting the gear teeth onto the wing, I'm only going to use them as reference. So now let's edit master. And then I'll create a sketch for this wing on the back of this wing. And I'm going to convert entities, select other and take those gear teeth. 
and then I'll press convert entities. And now we're going to extrude this. Uh, I like doing up to surface. So up to surface on the other side. And then this is, this is on automatically, but if it's basically, this is asking like, oh, which bodies do you want to merge it with? And if you're ever touching another body, it might auto merge it with that body as well. So it might merge it with the body and I don't want that. So I'm going to, I'm going to unselect auto select and then just click the wing. Cause that's what I want it to be a part of. Cool. All right. Now let's do that for the other wing. And that's not something you can mirror because, uh, we changed like the orientation of the gears, right? Extrude. Oh, whoops. Make sure it didn't merge a body that I didn't want it to. All right, cool. All right, so that looks good. And now I'll hide my two other gears. Oh, whoops. Forgot to uh, have the hole back in this one. Take that hole. Okay. All right, that looks good. So now we have two gears that are meshing and like uh, we'll move the wings the way that we wanted to. All right, so now that we have our wings made, I want to make like a like a bar that the wings can sit on. So here, I can't see anything. I'm going to take a section view and then make a, uh, a sketch. We'll do on the surface. Actually, we don't need a section view. I'm going to do convert entities. Whoops. For these two holes. And then I'm going to draw a line that connects them. And then I'm going to make all of this reference. And uh, I'm going to offset in both directions by 10 millimeters. And take these two edges. And these will be construction too. And we just want to extend these guys to the edges. Actually, they should not be construction. They should be solid lines. And then we trim the outside. Boom. Okay. So now we're going to extrude this. And we could go up to surface. Select the bottom surface. And we'll select this body. Boom. All right. So now the wings can uh, rest on here as they rotate. Cool. All right. So now that we have our gears, our wings with gear teeth, we're going to add the stepper motor in the position that we want it to be in so that it can drive these wings forward and backward or up and down. So I'm going to move this. Uh, it should be like in this orientation. like here so it's a little like disoriented so this face is going to be parallel with what the front face and then the right plane should be parallel with uh where's the file step like that. Now let's put it like approximately there. Cool. All right. So now we need one more gear. That's the same gear. So just uh, control C, control V is how I did that. And now let's move this and do the same thing that we did before. So it's going to mesh with these two other gears. And I'll put it like... Like there. Just got to play with it until you get something that works. 
All right, that's a good position. So now let me fix this so it doesn't move. Oh, actually, I'll float it. It should be on the same plane as the other wings, right? So like that. And I'll fix this now. Cool. All right, so now, All right, so let's think about where this gear is going to go, right? So I'm going to I'm going to hide the body. So the way that you do that is while in the assembly file is you open up the master and then just like you would do it in the normal master. So you would just hide the body. So this step motor is going to come back and then this gear is probably going to sit on like this little flat here. Wait, actually before that, let's align a cylindrical face with our gear. And then in terms of like where it's gonna sit, it's probably gonna sit on this flat right here. And make that uh, coincident with this guy. Boom. All right, awesome. So we could show our body again. All right, so now uh, let's hide our body again and we'll press edit component. And we wanna make a sketch on the back of this step motor. Basically we need to create like a plastic housing around the step motor so it can't move or wiggle. And now what we want to do is grab like, how do I explain this? We want to like grab the outer perimeter of uh, our step motor because we're going to create like walls that basically like hug it and like prevent it from moving around. So like all the outermost edges like that. All right, this is a little disorienting, so I'm just gonna go back to my master. Okay, so we're gonna have to extend these lines into this circle. Whoops, just trim that guy. And then I need a, to extend these lines and then extend these, and then I'll trim the ends. And then these. this is bothering me, so then I'll extend it. Just like that and I'll trim this too cool all right so this is this represents like the outer the outer perimeter of the step motor and I'm gonna make this um, reference so now I'm gonna offset and we want this to be sort of a tight fit so we're gonna go 0.25 uh, we don't need bi-directional anymore make sure it's on the outside and then let's give it nice thick walls. 10 millimeters. Turn the body back on. And then I'm just going to extend this line all the way down to the bottom here. So extend and then trim the ends. All right. So now we'll do extrude. And we're going to go up to surface and we'll go, whoops, all the way down to the bottom. Oh, what's going on? Wait, what is this? Oh, I understand. All right, so now we we got to offset from here. I'm going to create nice thick walls. 
and then I'm going to turn the body back on. And I'm just going to extend this all the way to the bottom here to make sure it's really secure. So extend, extend, trim, trim, trim. And now when we go to extrude, we'll go up to here. Boom. So then we extrude this. Doesn't like that. I think it's because we're going up to this bottom surface and it's like right on this edge. What if we did up to body? There we go. And then also you can go the other way too. I don't know if I showed you guys this yet, but you can send it in the other direction as well. Send it up like 12 millimeters. So now, we go back to our assembly, we have walls that sort of hug our stepper motor so it can't rotate around or move, right? Sort of locked into place. Um, the only issue is, if we take a section view, we see that there's no bottom to it. So let's add a bottom. So we'll do edit component in our assembly file. And I'll make a new sketch, once again, on the bottom of the stepper motor. And we'll just take, we'll take this outer edge. Select chain, take that edge. Well, didn't take the whole thing. We need these walls as well. And Shrew that down. All right, cool. So now it's bottomed out. It can't it can't be pushed into the body anymore, right? And it can't rotate around, right? Because it's a circle, but it's got this like weird end block. So it's the these walls are preventing this guy from turning at all. So it's locked can't go in or out of the body and it can't rotate. So what else do we have to do? So now I'm gonna edit component of my master and make a sketch here. And I'm gonna convert entities of this outside. And I'll take this inside edge as well. And we'll go to like, I don't know. Thing like that. We're making like this little ring. And then if we. It's a little hard to see. I want to hide the body again. I'm going to see the body. So I hide the body, a little bit easier to see now. And then I'm gonna extrude this up to the surface of like these little ears. Okay, so since we had the body hidden, it didn't see what to connect to. So now I'm gonna, I have to go back in and then click merge results. Make sure we're connecting to the body. There you go. All right, and then the last thing is um, so it can't go into the body, but it could come out. So we have to like press it down. So the way that we're gonna do this is I'll show you. So if we create a sketch here, and then we go convert entities, we need this and this 
and this, and this. Actually, we could just take the face that we just made. That's easier. And then we need the edges of the dog ears, so... Uh, we need that, and that, oh my gosh, dude, All right, so we need to take the edges of the dog ears, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna make all of these. I'm just holding Control and selecting all of these edges. I'm gonna make all of these reference, and then offset them. Whoops. By point two five. <laughs> okay, so I'm back in my master. And we have to clean this up a little bit with the trim tool. So trim that, and that, oh, and this guy. Oh, there's a little bit extra here, and here. And we gotta do the other side. Whoops. Here, and here, and then here, and he here. Why is that not a closed shape? Hmm. Uh, should be close. Can I not extrude this? Oh, shoot. I don't know why these circles weren't. That's still not it? Eh. Oh. Okay, so if you had an issue with this, then you might have to connect these two arcs by a line. I don't know why it's not connected, but I have to do it on the other side as well. And then... Oh, shoot. Let's go back to our assembly file. And then go to edit component. And then I want to bring this, extrude this sketch up to the surface of the top of these ears. So. There. Just like that. Cool. And then I'm gonna we're gonna do this part later, but we're gonna have another piece. So the best way to do this would be to use little screws that go through these little holes and like clamp the motor down to the plastic. But I don't wanna have you guys buy like extra hardware or like other screws. Like there's ways that we can do this with just 3D printing. So that's what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna show you how. Um, but that part will come later, but for now, uh, all we know, for now, we know that um, the stepper motor is locked into pos the position that we need it to be in. Uh, also, there's one more step that we need to do. So we're going to make a sketch on this face right here. Basically, the, the stepper motor has this, like, 
blue box on the bottom of it but in the model that i chose there's this little extra edge that prevents it from like fitting uh in the model nicely so just follow these steps and uh it'll work out so first i'm gonna make a line that's on this center point and i'm gonna make it reference geometry because we're gonna do some mirroring and i'm gonna create a box just like this and you're gonna dimension it uh, this is four from here to this corner. Uh, we'll do eight. And then this edge from here to here, we'll do 2.5. And then we just mirror it to the other side. So take those lines, mirror about the center line. And now we extrude cut and we're going to bring this all the way down to the bottom surface. So we're going to go up to surface. Boom. Just like that. So I'll explain in a little in a bit more detail what was happening. There's like in actuality. So there's this blue cover, right? In actuality, there's like this weird corner here. That's like an extra piece of material. And when I printed it out the first time, it was like jutting into uh, the plastic and it wasn't fitting in the the little recess we made for the stepper motor so if you do that step it should fit just fine and then you still have enough wall to lock it into place and then the last step is let's take a look at the body and then if we make this just like a sh oops Let's take a look at the body. If we go here and we click this, then we'll we'll be able to just make this like a sh oh doesn't like that. If we go here, we can make this a bit of a sharper corner. So it goes from like arc to just like a little horizontal and then if we do a section about the right plane now we'll be able to add a nice round fillet because it's got a sharp corner there so we'll go on the outside and the inside and let's see how high we can get uh, I don't know 20 something like that nice so now it's nice and rounded Cool. Okay, so that's it for the body. Uh, so let's let's name our parts. Wing left. Wing right. Body. And then I'll just group the wings with the body in one folder. So body. Cool. All right. All right. We got a lot done, and I'll see you in the next part.